My bookshelves are driving me mad. I hate them at the moment. They're stressing me out. And that is because they're overstacked, they're unorganized, and I haven't gone through and reorganized or unhauled any books really, like on a systematic large scale level, really since we moved. And it's just become a bit of a mess. These bookshelves are out in our living room. And this sort of just ended up becoming my <laughs> go to to throw all the books that I come home with. And as a children's bookseller, I do tend to come home with books fairly often, including proofs. I'm not really sure how I'm gonna do this, but I thought the best way to start would just be to start with a bit of an unhaul. So that's what we're here to do. We're here to go through my bookshelves and be as ruthless as possible and get rid of as many books as possible. Because I have too many books. We have a two bedroom apartment. There's not a whole lot of space for the two of us and too much of that space is being taken up by books at the moment. Hi, have you come to help? Yeah. So this bookshelf that we're looking at here, the top two shelves and then the fourth shelf down are pretty much all proofs or some books that I've bought from work. They're pretty much all children's books. They're books that I want to read to be a better children's bookseller. This third shelf here, along with the cat toy, uh, are mostly books that I decided to keep from my book grocer mystery book boxes that I got over Christmas. The fifth shelf down started out as books that I did want to get rid of, that I sort of was setting aside to, you know, take to savers or to give to little libraries around town when I went for walks. But since I ran out of space for new books and other books that I didn't know where to put, it's also become books that I don't think I want to get rid of. And then as it is too easy to do, the very bottom shelf is kind of a junk space. I mean, there's stuff that's sort of too big to put elsewhere. There's a few books. I don't know, it's, it's not really pretty. I'm freaking out a little bit, but this has been a long time coming. So let's just get started. Okay. I think the first one we're gonna get rid of is this Penguin Teen Super Proof. It's sort of like got the beginnings of a whole bunch of YA titles published by Penguin. And I don't know, I mean, this is a great idea, but reading the first chapter or two of a whole bunch of books just, it doesn't appeal to me. Ah, I've actually got two copies of this. So that's an easy choice. Where's the other one? Here, yeah, yeah, two. I mean, are they any different? No, they're both proofs. So I can get rid of one of those quite easily. Oh, another one I've got two of. Uh, I bought this one, but I already had the proof. Clever, I'm so clever. I mean, normally it makes sense to keep the actual book, but I think this proof is really quite pretty. I like that cover a lot. But I am gonna keep the actual book, just in case I end up loving it and wanna collect the series. I will want them to like match and I'm not gonna get the proof for books two and however many others in the series there are. Don't think I need this one. Oh, it's already started. This one, I mean, I didn't like it and it was a proof as well. This one is pretty cool. It's sort of like trying to explain like the beginnings of the universe and how life came to be to young children. I think it's cool. I've read it. I don't feel the need to keep it. And I think someone else will enjoy it more. I actually bought this one for a friend because we both love K-pop and this is a YA about K-pop. And I had intended to read it first and then send it to her. But I just, I have so many other things to read. So I think I'm just going to send it to her. Everybody Looking by Candice Ilo. I've read this, I bought this for myself, uh, partly because it's such a beautiful hardback, but also because it's a novel in verse and I really enjoy novels in verse. This one was good, it was good, but I didn't love it. So I'm glad that I read it, but I don't feel the need to keep on holding on to this one. I think Julia and the Shark, I've spoken a little bit about this one. This is a middle grade and it's really beautiful in a lot of ways, but there were also things about it that I didn't like. So I don't see myself like recommending this one or wanting to like share it with people or really talk about it too much. So I don't see the point in me keeping this one. I need to be a bit more ruthless. I'm not really getting rid of any. Okay. Um, I found this one at Savers and it is a YA title. So I figured it would be good for me to read, but I haven't heard great things about this one and I just don't feel the desire or the need to read it. Pumpkin Heads was a graphic novel that I bought for myself and I liked it well enough, but I didn't love it. So I don't feel the need to keep this one either. Honestly, the same could go, I mean, Amulet was kind of cool. Do I really, I don't think I'm gonna read on in the series. I think it was good for me to read to be able to hand sell, but I don't think I need to keep it. And Click, I do actually quite like Click. I think this is quite a good little story about friendship and confidence. So maybe I'll keep this one. Hattie and Olaf, I kind of love and hate this. Uh, this is a junior fiction title. And I mean, Hattie is so bratty. Like she was infuriating to read, but I do kind of think this is a funny story. Uh, Hattie really wants a horse more than anything in the world. And instead her dad gets her a donkey. It's a fun premise. 
Uh, but yeah, Hattie annoyed the crap out of me. What Zola did on Monday, this is super cute, but I don't think I need to keep it. Underdogs is another one that I really liked, but I don't think I need to keep. There's a lot of these junior fiction ones that I haven't read yet, but I know would take me like no time to read. I would read them really, really quickly. So I don't want to get rid of them yet because I do feel like they would be good for me to read in terms of my job, but I just haven't gotten around to them yet. So maybe I need to keep them out separately and just like prioritize reading them so that I can get rid of them. Okay, it might not seem like much, but I feel like that's about as good as I'm gonna do for the top two shelves. Now, with these books that I got from the book grocer in those mystery boxes, I don't know that I really want them. <laughs> do I want any of them? I don't want this one. I think I'm gonna look up some of these books on Goodreads and just double check to see that they're not anything that I'm super excited about. But otherwise, I think I'm gonna err on the side of just getting rid of them at this point. Like they're not books that I picked for myself and they're just not books that I've ever been excited to read. And I have so many others that I am. Uh, these are books that I got for Blair for Christmas, for funsies. Nat's What I Reckon's cookbook. He really likes Nat's What I Reckon. Uh, and read this book and never fight again. Um, I mean, they were fun presents, but I don't think he, I mean, he read this once and it was funny, but I don't think he's going to read it again. And I'm going to check with him, but I don't think he actually really wants this. I'm going to get rid of this one and I'm going to set this one aside for him. So I have read all of these middle grades. Lenny's Book of Everything. I love Karen Foxley's Dragon Skin, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't hate this, but I didn't love it. I'm glad I read it, but I think I can get rid of this one. I kind of loved Allergic, but I don't feel the need to hold on to it. I think I will keep these three though. Let's put them up here. The rest of those middle grades I am quite looking forward to getting to, so I think I'm gonna keep all of those. These are all like magazines that I don't really need to keep. Come on, be ruthless, you can do it. I bought this one for myself when I realized I was going to become a children's bookseller, not from the shop I ended up working at, but I just wanted to try and get ahead a little bit because I felt so, you know, just in, in the deep, thrown in the deep end. Um, but I never got around to reading it and I don't, I don't really want to. I do want to try to read Percy Jackson, but I don't really want to read this book. I got the Great Gatsby graphic novel uh, as a proof. I've never read The Great Gatsby and I think I would rather read the actual book. So maybe I need to return this. I haven't done as well as I would have hoped, but at the same time I'm looking at the stacks and I mean, I did okay. I did okay. But I think that's about as good as I'm going to do for the top four shelves. Let's drop down to the bottom two and see how we go there. Right, we're on the floor. Let's take a look. So as I mentioned, quite a lot of these are actually books I already know I want to get rid of. Uh, so this should be pretty easy. <laughs> Let's just take all of these, shall we? Nice big stack of books that I don't want to read or have read and don't want to keep. Ooh, I think I'm over Mason Ikoku. This series has been giving me the shits. I haven't read this one. I've read the other four. I think there's going to be 10 in total and I just can't see myself investing any more in this. I'm so over the sexism. As much as I love our main character, Kyoko, I hate everything else about it. <laughs> These I definitely want to keep. Uh, the City We Became, I tried to read and DNF'd recently. So that's why it's down here because I thought I would get rid of it. But I'm loving the fifth season by N.K. Jemisin so much that it almost wants to like makes me want to go back and try this again. I still have my bookmark in here. I think I will hold on to this for a little longer, just in case. And then I did get this from work because I thought it was fun. It's Major Detours. It's like a choices novel uh, about tarot. So I kind of love that, but I thought it was a choose your own adventure. And it sort of is, but it's not really because you all sort of end up in the same spot anyway. I don't know. I'm nowhere near as excited about this as I was when I first got it. I think I'm going to get rid of it. These are games, which I can put with our other games. This is a <laughs> falling apart old sort of like scrapbook that my friend made me for my was it 17th birthday oh my god like all high school memories man but i don't i don't keep in touch with anyone from my high school so this is sort of bittersweet i mean i do love this page uh this was when 
Some of us went to The Cure. We went to The Cure in Brisbane. The Cure are my favorite band and have been for a very long time. Here is proof. We still got our tickets and also one of us managed to grab the set list from Simon. He sort of pulled them off the, the stage and threw them into the crowd. So that's kind of cool. Honestly, I keep this whole book for that. <laughs> Oh, there's a note from my ex-girlfriend in here too. I don't know. What do you guys do with things like this? That like do technically have like sentimental value, but not not solely good memories attached to. I mean, obviously someone who I cared about a lot at the time spent an awful lot of time and energy making this for me. But there's something about it that just doesn't, does not spark joy. But I don't know what to do with it. These are two wild book boxes that I haven't opened yet. <laughs> I will get to them eventually when I feel like I'm really in the mood for just, you know, something unexpected. Uh, but I have them here ready to go. And then a box for our router, I think, for some reason. I don't know. But I think we're done down here. You're helping, Harry. Are you helping? Thank you. Okay, apologies for the lighting in here. I tried, it didn't work. Let's look at the books that I just have out and about in my office. A lot of these are either new and I haven't figured out where to put them. Like this one and like magic steeped in poison. Um, so a lot of these I don't want to get rid of. Some of them are out because I recently or need to make a video about them or something. House on the Cerulean Sea though, did not like. Can definitely get rid of. I swear there's like a curse that I have where I'll go out of my way to buy a hardcover for a book that I think I'm going to adore because I rarely buy hardcovers. And I swear every time that I do that, I end up hating the book. <laughs> I did that with Piranesi. I did this with House in the Cerulean Sea. Hated both, both are going. These ones are all out because I want slash need to read them soon. These ones are out because my friend borrowed them and recently gave them back. I wanna keep both of them. Another one that's new and I didn't know where to put. And then I think the ones all are on my chair. Most of them I actually featured in a haul recently. Most of them are my eBay secondhand haul. So those are I'm keeping as well. I just need to find somewhere to put them. So that means we're on to the big job. My big, beautiful bookcases that are behind me that I definitely want to reorganize, but I need to sift through and decide what to keep before I can even think about doing that. There are very, very few proofs on here. Pretty much all of these books <laughs> I bought for myself because I wanted to read. So I think I am going to find this harder, but I also need to be a bit ruthless because some of these books I've had for years and never gotten to and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with having books that take me a while to get to. But I think there might also be plenty of books on here that I bought at a very different stage in my life for the person I was then. And the person I am now does not want to read them. Ah, <sighs> so let's go. There's pretty much no way for me to get this whole bookshelf in frame. So let's start with the higher shelves. Let's start with my Brandon Sanderson books. Obviously, I have the box set for the first Mistborn trilogy. I've read the first two books. If you miss that, my rant review is up in the corner. After enjoying The Final Empire, the first book so much, I did buy Arcanum Unbounded, which is like a collection of short stories and things. But I just have no desire to read this anymore. So I think I'm going to get rid of that. And obviously, I have not read the third book in the series. And part of me kind of wants to, but the other part of me is just like I have so many other books that I actually really want to read. I just don't think... I just don't think I want to put myself through that. So I think I'm going to get rid of this entire box set and Arcanum Unbounded, which I mean is pretty chunky, so that's not a bad start. While I was in my enjoying Brandis Anderson moment, I did find this, The Emperor's Soul, in a secondhand bookshop and I picked it up. Uh, I might look into the reviews of this and see if it's worth reading. Honestly, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just really not in a good place with Brandon Sanderson, so it doesn't excite me. But there are these pictures in here that almost look like tarot cards. So that is intriguing to me as a tarot reader. I don't know. I don't know about this one. I think that's all I can get rid of for the top shelf though. Let's move to the second one. Don't, why do I have this? I don't need this. Thank you, Penguin. It's not a lot of Australian books I want to get rid of. 
Uh, that sort of third shelf along there is Australian non-fiction and Australian fiction. Several of these are ones that I don't think I'll read, I don't want to read. That Dead Man Dance is an Australian classic and I have read it and I grew to appreciate it by the end but I didn't, I didn't love it and I don't see myself talking about it much or definitely don't see myself rereading it. I feel like I'm not doing very well on this shelf. I'm just gonna keep going and if at the end I really haven't pulled that many books off I'll have to go back and try again and be a bit more ruthless. Books like this that I've read, uh, but that I, I don't think I liked this, but it kind of blew my mind. So I've kept it just as, I don't know, more a curiosity. What do you, what do you guys do with books like this that you didn't actually really like, but I don't know, I, I kept thinking about this book. So that's why I decided to keep it. But now I'm, I'm wondering whether that's a good idea. <laughs> super successful on this shelf. Uh, two of these I've read, Baby and Little Scratch. I actually quite liked them. They're sort of like three, three and a half star reads. Kind of really bonkers, Baby. And Little Scratch is quite experimental in terms of its form, but it's about a woman sort of coming to terms with and dealing with her trauma from sexual assault. Like I have fondness for both of these books, but like I don't think about them and I don't talk about them. Like I am glad I read both of these. I think they're great. I just, I don't, see myself doing anything with them ever again. And then some books that I have not read that I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm gonna get to. The next shelf down, this one here, is nonfiction. So I think I'm gonna have to move you down a little. Into the nonfiction. Now this is where I feel like I've bought an awful lot of books that maybe just aren't for me anymore and where I'm at. Let's find out. <laughs> What even is this? I don't know. Am I going to read this or these? I don't, I don't think so. Am I ready to let them go? Also don't think so. A decent amount but honestly I feel like I could be more ruthless with that section just don't know that I'm ready to oh, I had to do it sometime today I feel like I did a little bit better on that side. Okay, now my manga. There's not a lot I want to get rid of there, but I think... <sighs> kind of annoys me. I love, love Kyoko and I want to see her grow. But this series is so sexist. And I mean, it's written by a woman in the 80s. So like, I... I I tried to be like understanding of that, but instead of being caught up in the charm of Kyoko, I'm just getting annoyed. So I'm halfway through the series, but I think I need to let it go. These are all first volumes of series that I liked well enough, but for whatever reason, I don't feel the need to carry on and I don't feel the need to collect them. I do need to go through my tarot decks and the other bits and pieces on that bottom shelf, but I think I need to do that separately because it's a lot of like journals and reference books and tarot decks. I don't know, I need to be in a different frame of mind for those things. Uh, so I think I've done my first run through and I do have quite a lot of books here that I'm getting rid of, but I just, I feel like I can do better. Not much better, but a little bit better. So let's go over one more time and see if I can be a little bit more ruthless with some of those books that I was unsure about. I mean, these are all the books that I've decided just in this room to get rid of. So, I mean, that's not a bad effort, but I think we can do better. Oh, goodness. Part of me wonders whether I should be trying to get rid of, oh, can I even reach? All of these, these Earthsea books, 
because I do have the big book that includes all of the books. And the reason I got that is because only the first four were available in this, but then the later ones weren't. I mean, these are a lot nicer and easier to read though. I think I still want to read this series. I just didn't love the first book very much. And I, I, I've heard from all the fans that it does get better. So I think I will keep these until I've read them and then I'll get rid of them and just keep the big book. Am I realistically going to read Crime and Punishment? No, no, I'm not. My mum bought me this a few years ago. It was a secondhand copy of a biography of Margaret Atwood because Margaret Atwood was sort of the author that got me into reading. I still appreciate Margaret Atwood's writing and I still love many of her books, but I don't know that I have enough interest in her life and in her to want to read a biography. This book had quite a lot of impact on me when I read it, like maybe seven or eight years ago. And I loved it and that's why I've always kept it, but I don't know that, I don't know that I really need it now. I don't think I do. Emotional Female by uh, Yumiko Kodota was huge in Australia, I think last year or the year before, and I loved it. I really loved it. But I don't think this is one I'm going to need to go back to. I think I would be better served putting this in the hands of someone who has not yet read it, rather than it just sitting on my shelf. I feel like I'm on a bit of a roll now. Just a couple of Margaret Apple books that I have double copies of. I have hard covers of these, so I don't need to have the, the you know, not very nice soft covers that I just found at um, secondhand bookshops however many years ago. An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. I pre-ordered this. I think this is signed. Yeah. And I've never read it. And I'm not like opposed to reading it, I just also kind of don't care. I love Hank and John. I think it's time to say goodbye. Someone else can get really excited over a signed copy. I think I'm done. And I'm looking at what I've pulled off this shelf, and I know the shelf still looks pretty full. But there are a lot of books here. So this is what we've ended up with to get rid of just from this shelf. I feel like I've done pretty well. That's a lot of books. And that feels good. That feels good. Actually, let me count and see how many I've pulled off. 79 books just in this room. 79. Did I count how many I did out there? Let me check. 62 out in the living room. That's a lot of books. That is a lot of books. Now I'm stressing out about how I'm going to get rid of them all. So thank you so much for hanging out with me. Uh, having you as my accountability definitely helped. I feel like otherwise I would have pulled off two books off each shelf and been like, oh wow, I did it. But that's it for the unhaul. Stay tuned for the reorganizing video. Oh my god. Now I'm stressed about that too. And an especially big thank you to my wonderful patrons over on Patreon for all of their support. And an especially big thank you goes to Olivia, Lynette Brown, Laurie and Ian Yitzark for their very generous support. Wish me luck organizing and I will see you hopefully soon with nice neat bookshelves. I'll talk to you then. Happy reading and so much love. Bye!